In the last lecture, we learned that every object has a prototype property and it is this prototype property which allows inheritance in JavaScript. Now, when you want to make a property or a method inherited by other objects, in order to do that, you will have to add those properties and methods to the prototype property of the object. And this is what we learned in our last lecture. In last lecture, I also mentioned that this person object, which we have created using this function constructor, is also an instance of some other object. Now, which is that object? That object is the object constructor. So, when we are instantiating this John, Mary and Steve objects, these objects are instance of this person object. And this person object is an instance of object object. Okay, let's understand this. So, whenever we create an object in JavaScript, let's create a very simple object. Let's call it Mark. Okay, now this Mark object is going to have three properties. Let's say name. Name is Mark. Let's also have birth year property. And let's say Mark was born in 1992. And let's also have gender property. And Mark is male. Okay, so here we are creating this Mark object using object literal. Now, whenever we create an object in JavaScript using object literal, in that case, that object is by default an instance of object constructor. So behind the scenes, this object will be created by JavaScript using this new object constructor. Okay, so it will be created something like this. Now this new object constructor, as we have learned, it creates an empty object, right? Once this empty object is created, these three properties which we have specified inside this object literal that will be created for this mark object, something like this. Okay, so the point here to note is that every object which we create in JavaScript is directly or indirectly an instance of object constructor. And to prove that this mark object is actually an instance of this object constructor, in the developer console, let's type mark and we have a prop, you know, a, an operator called instance of. This instance of operator returns true if the object in its left hand side is an instance of an object on its right hand side. So in the right hand side, let's say object. Okay, now when I press enter, it is returning true. All right, now this proves that this mark object is an instance of this object constructor. Okay, now let's type this mark object and let's inspect it. So type mark and then press enter. Here you can see it has returned the mark object. If I expand this mark object, this mark object has this name, gender and birth here property which we have specified here. And it also has a proto property. Now this proto property is actually the proto you know the prototype of object constructor okay so this mark object has access to the prototype property of object constructor and why is that that is because mark is an instance of object constructor and to prove that this proto is actually the prototype of object constructor let's say mark dot proto and let's do the equality check with prototype of object constructor so object dot prototype when i press enter it returns true and this proves that this proto property is nothing but the prototype of object constructor okay so since mark is an object of you know mark is an instance of this object object this mark this mark object will have access to the prototype property of object constructor and to this prototype property of the object constructor we have several useful methods like has own property is property of to string etc and since mark is an instance of this object constructor this mark object will have access to this prototype property of object constructor that means 
you can call any of these methods on this mark object. Let's see this with an example. Okay, let's clear this console here. And on this mark object, let's try to call this has own property method. Now this has own property method is present in the prototype of object constructor. So let me log this mark object again. Okay, if I expand this, this proto property of this mark object, here you can see it has this has own property. And this has own property is present in the prototype of object constructor. And since this mark is an instance of this instance of object constructor, it, it has access to the prototype of object constructor. And that's why we are able to call this has own property on this mark object. And to this has own property, we also need to pass a value. So let's pass name. Now, this mark object has a name property of its own. So when we have a property and when we pass it to the has own property, if it is own property of that object on which we are calling it, this has own property method will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So let's log the value returned by this has own property in the developer console. Let's save the changes and here you can see it has returned true. Okay, so what I want to show here is that here I'm able to access the methods which is present in the prototype of object constructor and I'm able to access it on this mark object. Why is that? That is because mark object is an instance of object constructor. Okay, so any object which we create in JavaScript is directly or indirectly an instance of object constructor. All right, now same is the case with this person object. We have learned that a function is also an object in JavaScript. And here, using this syntax, we are creating a constructor function. Okay, so this person is a constructor function. And this person is also an object. Okay, so when we create a constructor function like this, it also inherits from the object constructor. I mean, it, it is also an instance of the object constructor. Okay, so this person function constructor is also an instance of the object constructor. And to prove this, let's say, let's again use the instance of operator. So person instance of, okay, instance of object. Let's press enter and it has returned true. And this proves that this person is also an instance of object constructor. All right. So here, John, Mary and Steve are the instance of person constructor, this person object. And this person is an instance of object constructor, right? Now, because of this, since this person is an instance of object constructor this person object has access to the prototype of object constructor that means we can use any of these methods which is attached to the property of i mean prototype of object constructor on this person constructor also this john is an instance of person constructor person object okay so this john object has access to the prototype of person object of person function constructor and this person object has access to the prototype of object constructor. So because of this prototype chaining, this John object will also have access to the prototype of object constructor. Okay, that means on this John object, we can call any of these methods which is attached to the prototype of object constructor. Let's see this with an example. So let's clear the console again. Let's save the changes. And again, the John, Mary and Steve object has been logged here. Let's expand this John object. This John object has this proto property and this proto is actually the prototype of person object, right? Now, when we expand this proto property, it will contain all the methods and properties which we have attached to the prototype property of person object. So this calcage and this city is attached to the prototype of person object. And that's what you see here.
and this proto property has another proto property and this proto is the prototype of object constructor okay so if i expand this here you can see all the methods of object constructor and just to prove that this proto actually belongs or it is actually the prototype property of object constructor let's again on this john object access the proto property and this proto is the prototype of person constructor and on that prototype let's again call proto property okay so proto and let then let's do the equality check with prototype of object so object dot proto type and i press enter it is returning true and this proves that this proto is actually the prototype of object constructor and because of prototype chaining whatever methods we have inside the prototype property of object constructor we can call it on this john object so on this john object let's try to call again this has own property and again let's pass name here okay let's save the changes and here you can see it has returned true because this john object has a name property of its own on the other hand if i pass city it should return false because city is not john's own property john is inheriting this city property from the prototype of person constructor all right so this proves that we can use the methods which we have in the prototype of object on the on this john object okay so this is called as prototype chaining when we create an object let's say mark using object literal behind the scene it uses you know javascript uses the object constructor to create that object that means whatever object we create in javascript it is an instance of the object constructor and because of that that object will have access to the prototype property of object constructor so this is the prototype chain of mark object which we created and then here in this example we created this john object from person function constructor so this john object is an instance of person function constructor and since it is an instance of person object this john object has access to the prototype of person object now this person object is an instance of object you know object object and since it is an instance of this object constructor this person object has access to the prototype of object constructor and because of this this john object also has access to the prototype of object constructor and this is the prototype chaining for john object now why is this important let's understand this so let's scroll down and let's create an array let's call it arr let's say this array has three elements so 10 20 and 30 now on this array we can use we can call many methods like push pop shift unshift map etc but from where these methods are coming well whenever we create an array in javascript behind the scenes it uses array constructor to create that array that means this arr array will be created using this new array constructor okay and this also means that this arr array is an instance of new array constructor this array constructor and this push pop shift unshift and all other array methods are present are attached to the prototype of array constructor so let me log this array constructor in the developer console okay save the changes here this array has been logged let's expand this so here these are the elements of this array and it also has this length property and here you can see this array also has a proto property now just now we have learned that every array which we create in javascript is an instance of array constructor so this prop this proto property here is nothing but the prototype of array constructor and this prototype has all the methods which we can use on an array for example index of includes for each flat map if i scroll down we have this pop push map 
reverse, shift, slice, etc. So all these array methods are present in the prototype of array constructor. And since an array is an instance of array constructor in JavaScript, we have access to all these methods. And that's why we are able to use these, metho these methods on any array which we create in JavaScript. Okay. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any question related to prototype or inheritance in JavaScript, feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.